I will do literally anything for most dreams. <laughs> kind of true there comes a time when you're promoting something where you're like is this too far is this cringe to do it and i think you got to check your ego at the door you gotta you gotta be willing to try anything to make it work that's kind of what i ran into for this episode this is road to pro producer a series where i document my journey creating and releasing music for my artist project the current goal is to reach 100,000 plays on an independent release where we left off i had just hit 1500 streams or 1.5 percent of the way to the goal last episode i shared a bit of a, a little viral tiktok that i made and how i was able to capitalize off of that success through a playlist that I made. So that TikTok that I made, the little series that I started, I finally made a part four, songs that sound like Maddie and, and Porter Robinson. It really underperformed. That really sucked. I was, I was really expecting that to take off. So I'm still posting three times a day on TikTok and it feels like I hit a wall with views, the 200 to 300 range. The videos are still getting positive feedback, followers, likes, and it feels like people are discovering it. It's definitely something I want to continue, but it's not the same growth that I saw before. I had been worried about posting in July, but I figured out how to batch content. So like sit down and record a bunch of the visualizers that I had done. So I'll have like the lights be blue behind me. I'll listen to the entire song record it and then put that together chop that up into three different parts and then i do that three different times so there's like variation it's opened up more time of mine to like work on music which is great slideshows i think are still the move because the effort to, to results ratio on this it's kind of low effort really like it's not the same effort as making a video but the results are still coming from it so I'm either doing like a like a copy paste promotion thing and aesthetic pictures or just like photos of myself. And those are like the three categories of slideshows that I'm making. But that's what daily posting to TikTok has been like. So I had been doing this for about a week and a half and I was thinking to myself, this isn't going to make a good YouTube video. I haven't tried anything new, really. What I said is someone who is very serious about like music promotion, what would they be doing? I had known I should be doing this for a while and I had just never bit the bullet posting to different platforms other than TikTok. So I finally did it. I started posting on Instagram and YouTube shorts. So the reason why I never like posted this stuff to Instagram is like long story short, the people on there are people I know, not like fans of mine. I knew that it would have a hard time like getting into the algorithm because people wouldn't interact with it as fans. When I heard there was like a don't show followers option that they're introducing to Instagram, like if you post a reel, I was like, perfect, that, that makes sense. So there's a feature on there that says post this to reels and put it in the reels algorithm rather than show it in my followers feed. So what I did is I took that playlist series, the Maddie and Porter Robinson one. I re-edited those to make sense on like a different platform, posted them like one a day and would press the share to reels. It 100% went against that. It definitely posted it on my profile and it popped up in my followers feeds. Even though I know for sure I did not press that button and I said just post this to reels. So be warned if you're in a similar situation. <laughs> it feels it feels a little bit cringy. It's hard to put my finger on why. It's the difference between TikTok and Instagram, I guess. Posting to strangers versus posting to people you knew at some point in your life. It definitely doesn't hit the same and I didn't I didn't want to keep doing it after that. <laughs> so I, I stopped doing that after a bit. So Instagram actually breaks down the views for each of them and this is how I really figured out what happened. Before it had been posting to non-followers which is where that five number came from. Five, seven, eleven. It was low views but I stuck with the process until it started pushing them out to people that followed. Also, if you're gonna post to Instagram Reels, just know that it's gonna chop off the first few words of whatever you're gonna post. For whatever reason, it takes off the first like five to seven frames in an audio fade in. I don't know why they thought that was a good idea, but that's just the way it is right now. I also posted to YouTube Shorts, and I would say one and a half thumbs up to two thumbs up really happy with it. So there's three things that make YouTube like a different sort of short form platform. The first is the videos have to be under 60 seconds. There's also the content ID system. And then there's also no button that says I'm not interested in this like there is on like the YouTube desktop. So I think people use the dislike button in that instance. I'm not going to be taking dislikes personally on shorts. That's that's just what it is. So the main difference between like Instagram and YouTube is the algorithm actually worked. It was like really aggressive for like 
like an hour at a time for each post that I did. <laughs> I don't know why, but that's just, that's just the way it is. <laughs> YouTube also has the, the button that says, please don't bug the people that already follow me. This is for everyone else. So I, I clicked that on these. So I was gonna kind of measure how well this did with three ways, the playlist likes, the clicks on the bio link, and then the views for each of them. Whenever YouTube short took off, I saw a huge spike in the link and bio clicks. 145 likes when I started, after 24 hours, that was at 163. And at the end of all of this, it was 187. So super happy about that. I know that data is not isolated, but I'm pretty sure all of those came from YouTube. This is what my artist page YouTube looks like now. It's just a bunch of shorts, but yeah, the best ones were getting in the thousands. So that was pretty cool. So I've been doing all these episodes in like periods of about two weeks. So at the two week mark, I had posted a few to shorts and a few to Instagram reels. I said, you know what? This isn't juicy enough content for an episode here. So I'm going to I'm going to try something new. I had this idea I'd been uh, cooking up ever since I saw something on TikTok. I saw this guy who was basically just recommending music and that was all it was. It was like instead of the playlist videos I'd been doing, which was like seven songs, eight songs, he was just recommending one. I have like a 15 second video for something like that. So I set out to do that. I just made like a really good playlist of songs. I wanted to make the playlist series title around something that I could also put my song in too, because that's, that's the whole point. I landed on something and it was EDM songs to add to your summer playlist. So after spending a few hours putting that together, I did like a Spotify playlist to CSV and it got the metadata for all those songs. All I really cared about was the, the title and the artist so I could check off like whenever I did one. And in doing that, I found out that there's like a song popularity index. But yeah, this is something that the API pulls. My song had a, had a 19 when I pulled it. I was expecting it to be really low, like three or something. So the idea is I record myself saying EDM songs to add to your summer playlist part one and then put the best part of one of those songs in there in total like 15 20 seconds short term and long term goals for this my short term ones I really want that thousand followers on TikTok you can only get that link in bio feature if you have a thousand followers and that is so much easier to do like a call to action for anything but like long term of course I want to direct those people to a Spotify playlist that I own that I can put my own music in and increase my streams and gain fans, right? So yeah, I spent an additional week trying to like get this going. The question is, did it work? Not as well as I expected. <laughs> The videos themselves are getting some attention, but it's definitely not translating to the playlist. There's three variables I changed for this compared to the last one. It's not like a niche style. It's just songs to add to your summer playlist. It's only one song per video compared to like five for the previous ones. And there's no clear call to action in the video. In the past ones I had done, this is how you get to the playlist, you know, go follow the playlist. So I'm kind of stuck here. I know this works. I've seen multiple people become playlist influencers, grow playlists to be like thousands and thousands of people on it. I'm not getting the results I want after like a week of doing it. But on the other hand, I see that it works. There's like proof that it works. That's the big question. Okay, why don't we real quick look at some results. So this is the 28 day stats for Rome. The high point from when I posted that TikTok video, it was like right here. There's no massive spikes, but there's a lot of variance to it. The Apple Music stats for the past four weeks, it's kind of a similar story as it's always been. Not a lot of plays or streams there. But for the stats all time, we've got 2.7 thousand plus 256 equals 2,999. We're going to round up and say that's 3,000. So yeah, officially 3% of the way there to that goal of 100,000 streams. Something I pointed out last video is the source of streams for the song, and that has changed a bit. So yeah, there was a huge spike in streams from that one TikTok video, but that fell outside of the 28-day range, and that's kind of what the source of streams data tells. The amount of plays directly from my catalog went down, which is usually what happens when you, you find the video. You're like, okay, let me go listen to the song on that artist page. And there was an increase in Spotify algorithmic playlists. That piqued my interest. I went to look at it and the increase I believe was from the radio feature on Spotify. That went up from 12 to 65. I feel like that's finally seeing some of the benefits of that playlist experiment that I had tried, the Maddie and Porter Robinson one. One way that I saw this was I opened my Spotify one day and I saw this on there. More like Stephen Flores. You got Ultra Gaming, Pixel Garden. Look, Maddie and right there. 
there, front and center. I got a tiny bit of hint that this is working. How many followers did I get on TikTok during this period? It was an increase of 85. That's pretty encouraging too. So finally, we got a new number for Spotify monthly listeners, 1,196. I was closely watching it for when that TikTok spike would be at the very end of that 28 day spectrum. And so I put that in right here. So yeah, I knew it would go down, but I'm actually really stoked that it didn't drop a ton. All right, so my question is, what do, you, what do you think I should do? Like, really? Let me know in the comments. I'm interested. I'm somewhat satisfied with the progress so far. I feel like the music recommendation series that I'd started has potential and I'm willing to like keep working on it even though I haven't seen the results. Do I just keep running it back or should I like really lean hard into the music recommendations? Because I could do two to three of those posts a day. I'd really appreciate it if you told me what you think. And thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.